first of all, thank you very much for how um, the clarity you brought with mechanics of expository preaching and the very clear structure. Uh, very, very helpful. In line with that, my question is regarding the notes that you take into the pulpit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so often I feel this battle with sermon notes and sermon delivery trying to come out. Um, so how, what's a way to think about our notes? How do you, how do you use sermon yeah, notes? Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, great question. Did everyone hear the question? Okay, good. Um, I'll just speak from my experience. That this is not intended to be a one-size-fits-all for everyone in this room. And it, it, this is a very personal thing, notes. I would say I probably have 70% of what I'm going to say in my notes. The introduction will be pretty full. I don't want to have too many notes. Because while I'm preaching, I'm going to be adding things. And if I go up there with 100% of what I'm going to say, then I'm going to end up with 130%. So I have to purposely uh, leave margin. Uh, margin's a good thing. You want to have margin in your checking account. Uh, you want to have margin with your time schedule. You want to have margin with your preaching notes. So... Um, I handwrite my notes, um, and in part, I mean, I've always done it that way, but I can even be tinkering with them on the front pew in the middle of the sermon, you know, in the car on the way headed to church. I mean, I don't, I don't have to have a printer and keyboard and all that. Um, you want to use your notes like a trampoline, like a diving board, a launching pad. You do not want to just read your notes. Well, we, eye contact is critically important. And if you're so attached to your notes, we call that a bubble creature. You're in like a, a, a bubble. You're in a glass bubble. And you are disconnected from the people to whom you're speaking. And um, it puts up a barrier between you and them. So uh, you, you want to have notes that just launch you into what to say. Now, it has taken me a very long time to scale back my notes, and that usually happens with a preacher as he preaches over the years. He starts out with a fuller set of notes, and he ends up with a thinner set of notes. Because he's building a body of knowledge, he's learning how to speak, and... Um, he doesn't need as much in front of him. So, you know, I, I can, I say I can show you. I, 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 I used to use an eight and a half by 11 that would fit in a notebook like this. And for the 34 years of my pastorate, I preached out of a three ring eight and a half by 11. And when I retired, it was almost like it, it broke my trance and it made me think about what I was doing. It got me out of my rut to just think. And I realized I'm flipping pages, and that's kind of a distraction. And I saw some other preachers flipping pages, and I thought, wow, that didn't look good. It's like some guy with a dark suit and white socks. I mean, it just didn't look good. <laughs> so, um, see you <laughs> So, and I've noticed, I noticed that MacArthur uses smaller cards, but MacArthur is also flipping. They're not in a three-ring notebook. They're just loose in his Bible, but he's turning because he has notes on both sides of the page, and I, I don't like that. So I just settled into five-by-eight cards. You know, you get Office Depot, and I can just slide them, and you never see them. If you're sitting there, and I have people come up all the time and say, I cannot believe you could talk that long, that well, and you had no notes. And, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm thankful to hear them say that, and I just explain why I did have notes, because I'm just sliding. I don't write on the back side because I've had to flip it, so I just write on one side. I tried it for a couple of 